All right, commissioners, what do we think here? Well, we don't know where the drainage goes, but th will that change? Will it matter? I don't know. I don't think the drainage is going to really change because the, it's all pavement now. They're just pushing out the um, drive-through lanes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, the true. reason why I ask is if, if, if the drainage is just in a dry well or on, on site, uh, then I'm less worried about the impact of the wetlands because it's all curbed. You get a rainstorm, big deal. But if it's piped directly to the wetlands, you could have issues when when all that uh, asphalt's ripped up. Fisher Stewart's right. We do have there is a potential impact to the wetlands based on just their construction methodology. You know they have silt sacks, they have silt fence, so they're using hay bales. I mean, it's not a big presentation. It's not a it's not a big plan. It's a very very simple thing, but I think we should hear something. So you, so I will let the attorney know that they have to come in front of us just to present this, that not to necessarily submit um, an application yet, but they need to discuss it with the commission. I would say I would be in favor. If anybody else, I'd be in favor of um, not making it a public hearing, right? If we could do that, and just have them come in and just present to us so that we're all feel comfortable about what they're going to do or is that, is that not yeah i agree with that but I mean, are they are they going to be submitting an app an actual application or are we just asking them to present I, i'm okay with asking them just to present because it doesn't look like there is any change you know major changes like the gas station that we had a couple months ago had like a settling pond you know they, they were doing some couple other things in the in new fresh land, we understand that they're you know in, in they're expanding beyond. I understand these guys are working within the same pavement footprint, but we just have to you know to do our due diligence to you know make sure we cover our bases. You know, yeah, have a discussion about impact, potential impact. Well, it's good because we have to write. We have to let the P and Z know that they've seen us and we're okay with it before PNZ would accept and even have a hearing because it has to be, be a hearing for PNZ. So I think if we can, that's my opinion. And if we can, they present to us on July 22nd. Yep. And we give them, we could potentially, if, if their presentation is worthy, we could possibly give them an acceptance that night. Okay. Well, unless that's crossing any bounds that I'm not aware of. Denise, when can we have an agent, have you given agent approval? Under what when situation? Have I? No, when, is there, is there a regulation when, when you get to give an agent approval versus not? Typically an agent approval is work within the upland review area where it's, it's been disturbed. It's already a disturbed. If it's a lawn area, things like that. If it has to do with, they're going to be removing some trees, like major, you know, yeah. But a it's, little bit it's more. for commercial it, it, it as well. It, it it falls under commercial as well as as uh, residential. Well, that's where it do, it it doesn't it doesn't really dictate between commercial and residential. It seems that most of the commercial, at least what I've seen since I've been here, is most of the commercial have normally been an an application to IWC. Well, so it seems to me that if they come and they give a presentation, and we think it's minor, then we give you the authorization to do a agent approval. Okay. That, that's, Guys, that's commissioners, okay. it is eight o'clock. I wanted to get 64 Cambridge at least an hour of time. All right, this was the last thing except for the minutes. So, yep. If there's any other questions, real quick. Nope, I like I like Jim's thing. idea. What's that? I like Jim's idea. All right, I think we all are in favor of that. Does anybody have any? Um, sorry, Donna, we can't hear you. I don't hear Donna either. No, me yes. neither. So she has no uh, audio. Muted. I don't even or... see her photo anymore. So I've got oh, her photo. No, oh, she's here. Uh, Wave, Donna, if you can hear us. 
Okay. Right, we can okay, hear you. can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm not quite sure why you couldn't before. What was the issue with Jim? What did you say you wanted an agent approval? What I said is, is they come and they give us a, a presentation on the project and, and, and what they're doing. And if 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 we think it's minor, then we let Denise do an agent approval. Okay. Because well, um, we. Sorry. Well, why couldn't we just vote on it that night and approve what they're presenting to us? Well, because then they need a full application. Do they? See, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't want, I don't want to make the call, but I'm not. Yeah, if, if, you're not, if, if you don't have me do it as an agent approval, then it's kicked up to you guys. I don't see why there's why we can't just do an agent approval because Denise can make sure that they're doing all the proper ENS controls. And since it's within a previously disturbed area, they're not going outside the disturbed area. That, um, that seems like an agent approval is fine with me. That is, for, that is true. That is true. Do we still want to get a hear from them at the sec the next meeting have them explain to us what's happening that's there's two there's two things here they could happen either one or the other or both. so are we saying we don't want them to come in or we want them to come in explain to us if we have no question everything's cool we let just denise take denise handle it the next day of business that's what i'm hearing Right, so we do want to see them, hear from them. They don't have to put in a formal application. Is that correct? Yes. You want to agree unless, with that? unless we deem it that night. Well, like you said, if we look at it and we don't have any issues, Denise, you just you know, you you do agent approval, make sure it's all being done properly. But at least we get a chance to get our eyes on it. And give a blessing to Denise to handle it herself. Is that what I? Is that what I'm understanding? That's how I'm understanding. Or do we not even want them to come in? I don't, I'm I'm on, I can go either way. So let the other other commissioners decide. All right. Let's uh, do, let's make a motion. Is any uh, to have them come in and present something to us, and we could determine whether. We have Denise handle as an agent. A motion. You have a motion for Commissioner Stewart for that? Yeah. I'll second it. You got a second from Commissioner Spence. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any, uh, sorry, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's that's what we're gonna have them do. It's not they don't have to come in with saw tonight except for it would be nice to see the drainage plans okay of, all right and yep. the drainage plans actually because that the was drainage, a yeah they have to come with their their full set of previously approved plans i'm sorry that's what we should have okay full set so of previously they're going to bring into p and z what okay. yeah that, i mean i just got the one i i, I assume p and z got more than one but we also want to see what was approved previously we'll compare it. So we want to see the as built of what's there Okay. All right. So we'll move on to uh, the minutes of June 10th, 2020. We have a motion. Move to accept this presented. I have a motion for Mr. Spence to, uh, to accept the minutes as written. Uh, second from uh, Commissioner Gingras. Second. Gingras. Second from Commissioner Gingras. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? None. Any abstentions? Okay. The minutes passed. Uh, June. Uh, regulation amendment committee. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, a public outreach committee. Nothing. Nothing. Correspondence is none. Okay. We are going to now uh, give the floor to um, the, uh, the the professionals that are representing 64 Cambridge Drive in. Uh, in the uh, corporate park there. A couple of things about what can happen. Um, we can definitely give them an hour. Uh, we are, they're basically gonna be presenting more, they're gonna, their presentation, their initial presentation is probably gonna take longer than this hour. It's probably a couple of days. 
Um, I think we previously agreed that we're going to have, we know we're having the um, independent review. Um, so there's not going to be much for us to say, and certainly we're not going to get to any public comment tonight. So going forward, I would like, as they're presenting, there's I think three or four individuals that are going to speak to us tonight. Um, if we have a question, it's only because you don't understand what's presented to you. We want to wait to make all our comments or suggestions or, or dislikes of anything or likes until after the complete presentation has been completed. So it's just right now, there's a clarification because you do not understand what's being presented to you. Then we would like uh, someone to speak up. And we thought maybe if we're all paying attention, maybe we could give them like an opportunity to pause during the presentation and ask us if so far we're all good. And then we'll make them very, we'll try to make it very short, maybe only a minute or two if someone has a question. Okay, do we understand what, what I'm trying to get across here? Oh, yes. Uh, BJ, you're there. Mr. Uh, Stewart, Jim Stewart, do you understand what we're saying? You're good. Thumbs up. Ross, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Mark, thumbs up. Can I ask one one quick thing? People that are not muted. There's a lot of extraneous noise coming through. There's what? There's some, a few people who are not muted. That there's other noise coming through. Okay, Donna, do we can we um Donna, you're muted. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So uh, a couple things. First of all, the recording did not catch the first part of the part of the meeting. Um, as far as it was um, for our motions for our bond releases, it is recording now. It did catch the last discussions of things, so I understand that. And it is going to catch this public hearing, so that I want that to be on the record. Um, as far as people muting, I've been trying to mute them, but I'm not sure. I think they have to mute them. They may need to mute them on their end, like their computer. I don't think it's ter that terrible on my side. We probably ask all presenters to speak a little bit louder. That probably might help. Um, but to to get this started, it is um, it is uh, IWC 2020-03R 64 Cambridge Drive for Independence Site Development and Restoration. Good evening, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Kevin Soley. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Soley Engineering. Office is located here in Monroe at 501 Turnpike. I um, want to thank everybody for, for doing this. I know there's the, the online stuff is, is, is scary and sometimes inefficient, but I think it's a great way to keep things moving. So um, just to thank, thank uh, Mr. Chairman for, for setting up this structure and, and laying out the ground rules. We appreciate it. Just to give you guys some um, submit that on our, our approach. So with me here this evening is Arnold Carp, represent, representing the applicant and the owner of the property. Um, Bill Kenny is our soil scientist, and um, uh, Attorney Steve Finn is, is also here. Uh, any legal issues come up? But what we wanted to do was, um, I'm just going to offer a quick introduction. Arnold's going to talk a little bit about um, himself and, and, and help put a face to this application. Um, Bill Kenny. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of a brief history of the site. Bill's going to talk about the, the wetlands and the natural resources, and then I'm going to run through our proposed um, our proposed project and the details of the application. So, so with that, I'm going to hey, offer to Arnold. Uh, and actually, um, before I go Kevin? too far, if, Donna, if you could make me presenter, I could share my screen as we go through. Kevin, I think okay. you're coming. You, you're you're coming on, a little Kevin. low. Anybody having a hard time hearing Kevin speak? Maybe Sorry about up. that. Yes, I will do that. All right, that's better. You should have it now, Kevin. Got it. Okay, so with that, I'll ask um, Arnold to uh, 
to maybe say a few words? Uh, good evening, Commission, and uh, I appreciate uh, you know us doing this uh, over the uh, internet. Uh, most of you will remember me from last time. State your name and, and your association with the project. Yes, my name is Arnold Karp. I am the owner of 64 Cambridge and Four Independents. Uh, the Thank property you. is solely owned by myself and my family. Uh, tonight's presentation uh, is a new application to move this property forward and talk about restoration. Uh, the long-term plan is to improve and develop this property into commercial space. Um, we've committed significant time, money, and effort, and look forward to working together with the commission uh, to solve the outstanding issues. Uh, there's been some misinformation uh, spread, and tonight we're gonna speak to fact, not fiction. One of the things that uh, I happened to speak to one of the abutting neighbors who said, geez, Mr. Carp, uh, I know you have been blasting uh, there. Just for the record, and to make this very clear, we have not, uh, we, we voluntarily uh, stopped blasting at the end of July 2019 uh, per a, an agreement with the town. So while there's been things called in to various state agencies, local agencies, the town itself, um, you know, we keep complete records on everything and everyone who comes into the site. I'm happy to meet uh, with any of the neighbors to um, allay their concerns. But at this point, I'm going to hand it off to my team of very capable professionals to explain how we're going to restore and renovate this important property. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Um, so. So I'm just going to run through a little bit on the, the site itself. So the, the, the site's located at... Um, Kevin, please restate. Or, please restate. Yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, again, my name is Kevin Soley, um, a licensed professional engineer. So again, um, so the, the application before us tonight is for a joint application for two properties, 64 Cambridge Drive and four Independence Drive. The sites are located, um, and up on the screen now should be an aerial of the town of Monroe. The sites located along the northern, uh, just south of the town line with Newtown. Route 25 runs north-south along the western side of town. This site's access through the Pepper Street Business Park um, via Pepper Street and Cambridge Drive. Um, the Just to zoom in a little bit, you can see here the overall Pepper Street Business Park. Um, and then here's the site, two, so two properties, 64 Cambridge Drive is approximately 52.93 acres, and four Independence Drive is approximately 18.97 acres, and these are the two properties subject to this application. Now, these, uh, this property has received several applications over the, uh, several approvals over the years from Inland Wetlands and Planning and Zoning. Um, going back to 2006, the project was first approved for the construction of two industrial buildings. Um, this, uh, the site plan up before you is what was approved in 2006. Now, this project was approved by planning and zoning, and at the time, the proposed activity was outside of the regulated area from the wetlands. So, um, the individual site plan application did not receive approvals from wetlands. However, the, the, the construction of the two buildings was permitted through planning and zoning, um, and site construction commenced. In um, 2014, uh, or excuse me, in 2014, there were some violations or potential violations issued for the property in which um, an application was made to uh, remediate those violations, and that was achieved through a re-subdivision of Section 4 of the Pepper Street Business Park, which essentially pulled uh, an access road in from further inside of 64 Cambridge Drive brought it out to a cul-de-sac in front of 50 Cambridge Drive, and this work was approved, which essentially um, resolved the notice of potential violation issued in 2014. Um, in the, as part of the transfer of the property from the former owner to, to Mr. Karp, um, 
this permit has been transferred, a pre-construction meeting has been held for this work, and this work has been commenced, has commenced, and this work is continuing in its normal um, course of order. So that included the construction of a cul-de-sac in front of 50 Cambridge Drive, modification of property lines, and then the construction of a driveway, a paved access driveway into 64 Cambridge Drive. Um, as part of that also included some um, uh, restoration plantings for some wetland upland enhancement and the construction of a stormwater basin, all of which is being completed in accordance with, with that approval. Um, in November of last year, the uh, Wetlands Commission issued a uh, notice of violation to the current property owner to um, uh, address the activity that's been going on in the property for, for several years. Um, in February, uh, so our office was, was engaged by the new property owner. In February, we submitted a comprehensive response to the, those notices of violation in which we basically did a full assessment of the property. We determined its current state and evaluated, um, you know, its, its potential impact to the surrounding, the surrounding wetlands, the, you know, the natural resources in the area. And we provided a comprehensive response, which included an analysis of the previously approved limits of disturbance, the current limits of disturbance, um, and, and the quality and the assessment of the wetlands um, themselves. We, uh, we were very clear and we acknowledged that the activity on the property um, was far beyond what was previously approved. And we're here and we're excited to be working with the commission with the, through this application to restore the site, to address those issues, issues that, that were um, created as part of the, the prior previous owner. Um, as, as Mr. Karp did allude, there is a lot of misinformation out there. There are some, there's some um, chatter on Facebook about illegal activities and um, concerns about impact to the environment. There have been some calls and uh, concern complaints made to not only the, the, the um, land use department in the town of Monroe, but also the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection in Hartford. The Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has come out to the site. There, um, the water permitting division, the air quality unit, and the solid waste division have all come to the property in response to these um, uh, complaints. They've all done inspections on the property, and they've all, um, and throughout all those inspections, they have not identified any actionable items that are um, uh, any kind of gross violation or negligent uh, um, um, issues on the property. Um, in addition, this property is covered through through uh, transferring of permits and, and new permits applied for the new owner. It is covered under by the DEP through a general permit for stormwater discharge during construction. It's also covered through a general permit for stormwater discharge for industrial activities. Our office has been retained. We are performing um, consistent and routine uh, uh, site inspections to evaluate the soil erosion sediment control conditions on the property to make sure that um, uh, adequate SEC measures are installed to try to protect the surrounding uh, resources on the property. Um, we have been providing those reports and, and um, as necessary. And um, again, as part of our as part of our analysis that was completed in February, what we determined was that the best way to restore the the um, the conditions of the surrounding uh, resources is to propose to fill the majority of the site to restore watershed patterns to kind of rehydrate some of the natural resources and the wetland areas surrounding the site. Um, we recognize and we understand that the, our application has been referred to the Southwest um, Conservation uh, District, which is performing an independent third party review. We we are excited that, that the commission um, uh, decided to take that. We, we welcome any further comments from from that reviewing agency, and we, that we're we're looking forward to incorporate incorporating some of their recommendations if if they think that our our it'll improve the project. And we certainly want to we're we're putting our best foot forward to propose a propose a project that'll that'll truly address and um, you know and restore the site to um, to address some of those concerns. So with, with that, I want to pass it off to Bill Kenny, who's our soil scientist. He did a comprehensive analysis of the on-site wetlands and resources. Um, you, the commission should have a copy of his um, report and analysis. He's gonna run through and talk a little bit about the on-site resources and I'm gonna go through in detail our proposed application and, and, and uh, what it includes.
Bill's meet muted. Oh. Bill, thank you. Go ahead, Bill. State your name for the commission. Sure. Uh, I am Bill Kenny. I'm the principal of William Kenny Associates in Fairfield. I am a professional wetland scientist, soil scientist, and landscape architect. Um, would it be possible for me to share my screen? Do I need to do that, Kevin, or can you? Uh, I think you would need to at this point. Um, okay. I am not. Uh, I did stop sharing my screen, so you should be able to. Okay. Uh, hold on, Bill. Let me get you up. Sure. Thanks. Oh, you know what? I think I can. Oh, I was just going to make him a presenter. I did it. Oh, you did. So it. you should be Great. all set. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, I may have a settings issue here. Um, hmm. Hey, Kevin, if uh, I don't, I don't think my system's going to allow me to do this. If you would put back up the uh, either the aerial or the wetland map from the EPS. I can, I can, Don. I think you need to make me presenter again. <laughs> okay, you do. Sorry about that. Thanks everyone for your patience. Uh oh, let's see. I could get started anyway and just give you uh, an introduction. So our our scope of work, my firm's scope of work with the project involved four major tasks. The first was to visit the site and identify and delineate the boundaries of the wetlands on the property. Um, the second was to conduct a vernal pool assessment and a wetland assessment, the conditions of the wetlands and vernal pools on the property. Uh, the map just before that would be great. That one's great, thanks. Um, so we delineated the wetlands, we assessed their condition, and um, we provided design consultation, working with the team, working with uh, Kevin's firm and the, the owner, Mr. Carp, to help develop the plan in such a way that we could uh, Im improve the uh, conditions out there as they relate to wetlands and watercourses. And then uh, lastly, we looked at an impact assessment um, from the proposed development uh, related to wetlands and watercourses. Uh, related to that or helpful to this whole process was work that has been done in the past. And as Kevin has noted, there was a development plan in 2006 um, and some other work in 2014 and associated with that were studies conducted by Environmental Planning Solutions where they also mapped wetlands and identified vernal pools on the property. Uh, we reviewed their, their reports and, uh, and so through our assessment and impact assessment, if you see in our report, we, we made comparisons to uh, the conditions of the natural resources of the wetlands and watercourses, and also we made comparisons to previous approvals. Um, and so our objectives through that process were, uh, since there was an approval in 2006, and that set some some boundaries, some levels of uh, impact, if you would, uh, we used that as a benchmark to look back to. Uh, in particular, we were looking at, uh, with regard to the wetlands and watercourses, where, where was the limit of disturbance, how much wetland buffer was, uh, was shown with those developments. And also something very important was uh, the watershed area, the drainage areas that were draining to the different wetlands on the site. And you'll see how that is important as I go through my discussion. Um, so we looked at that and... Uh, so in conclusion, I'll give a quick summary before I get into some more detail. Um, the, the, the plan that is being proposed now will have buffers of similar width and size or greater 
than the plan that was approved in 2006. So we're going to improve that um, or, or maintain essentially the same, I should say. And But what's more important is we're going to restore the wetland watersheds, the watersheds to these wetlands to something much closer to pre-development watersheds than what was approved in 2006. So we're going to really improve and help the hydrologic conditions of, of the wetlands and of the vernal pools. Um, so there are four different wetland systems that have been identified on the property. Our delineation was substantially the same as what was done in the past by environmental planning solutions, uh, with the exception of a small wetland area in the northeast corner of the site that is labeled VP3 on this map. Um, where they, they they concluded that that area was uh, both a wetland and a vernal pool. And based on the soils that we observed there, we um, did not conclude that it was a wetland soil. Um, it may have been a, a vernal pool in the past, a regulated water course, but it's our professional opinion. It's, uh, it's not a, a wetland. I, I say that, but... Um, Based on the development that's proposed, it's really not uh, relevant in that that area is removed from the construction area, but it is something that we did observe. Uh, so the wetland, there's a wetland one, four different wetlands, and they're labeled W1 through W4. Uh, on the west side or left side of the drawing is a W1, as well as VP1 or vernal pool one in the bottom left-hand corner, southwest corner southwestern portion of the property and then in the northeastern portion of the property are the three other areas uh, and there are north south aligned bedrock ridges in this area and the wetlands sit between those ridges and are also aligned north to south and so moving west you first have wetland two and within that is vernal pool two and then that small isolated area that was uh, mapped as wetland three and vernal pool three. And then furthest east is wetland four and vernal pool four uh, within that. Um, so our findings, um, what we found was that both with the plan that was approved in 2006 and with the current conditions, the watersheds draining to wetland two and wetland three were substantially altered they were decreased in size substantially um which led to uh to that these areas are much drier than they are than they were in the past and to the point where when we did our investigation this fall this winter and spring uh, we found no surface water in wetland two and and the area known as wetland three those vernal pool two, vernal pool three. And, and we also, due to the lack of water, we didn't find any vernal pool obligate species, any breeding of wood frogs or spotted salamanders or any uh, fairy shrimp. Uh, so those areas, the alteration of their watershed has substantially affected the hydrology of those areas. The vegetation is uh, appear, appears to be substantially the same. It hasn't been that long a period that the vegetation has uh, shifted in any way significantly, um, and there's no physical disturbances to these areas, um, except for on the very northern end of Wetland 2, where it's in a right of way for the uh, uh, unrelated project, the extension of Independence Drive off site. So uh, we find that the physical structure of the, of the areas, the vegetation remains intact, just that they're not getting the water that they used to get. Uh, moving to the east, the wetland and vernal pool number four that's furthest east, its watershed was not and is not affected by the current activities on the site. So we did find vernal pool activity, breeding and development of, uh, vern of obligate vernal pool species within that wetland. And it, it appears to be uh, mostly uh, unaffected by anything that's happening on, on the site. Uh, the wetland one on, on the western side had, had plenty of water and perhaps more water than it has in the past. And um, there's and that, that also could be due to some activities on site where the grading on site has 
surface water no longer drains to the east in some areas and now sits uh, in the in uh, depressions within the site and it's pumped out and cleaned and then released. But instead of going to the east, it's going to the west. And so perhaps wetland one may be getting more water now than it did in the past. And um, when we investigated wetland one, um, we found that uh, we didn't find any breeding uh, from uh, obligate vernal pool species, uh, no um, wood frogs or, or salamanders. We found some fin, fin fish, small fish, uh, which would indicate that their water here is, is uh, supporting uh, fin fish, which is a predator to, uh, the, to the vernal pool obligate species as well as some other amphibians and turtles that would be predators to those species, which may be a factor to uh, why we didn't find those species uh, breeding in that, in that area. So the proposed plan is to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is to restore the watershed um, to a point that is closer to pre-development conditions, closer to the 2006 plan, um, and thereby improve the conditions on site than they otherwise would have been if the 2006 plan was developed in, in its entirety. Uh, so we find that to be very beneficial. It would make wetland and watercourse conditions on the site better than they otherwise would be if the 2006 plan had been fully implemented. And then in addition to that, uh, the plan calls for restoring uh, the unnaturalized um, vegetated buffers of the wetland areas to um, sizes and, and areas that are equivalent or greater than what was approved in 2006. Um, so based on that, it's, it's our opinion that the plan is a good plan. It's better than what was approved in 2006 with regard to protecting the wetland and watercourse resources on, on the site. And we think it's a, a plan that sh should proceed with, with those things in mind, with uh, getting the watersheds back as close as we can to um, the pre-development conditions and restoring the buffers to those 2006 levels. Um, So that that is a, a, a summary of my uh, of our work to date, and I'd be pleased to answer any questions you might have at this time. Um, well, we. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's, um, so, do we have any? I'm gonna just go down because I don't have a full screen. Um, do we have any questions from Ross? I'm sorry, Lois. Lois, do you have any questions? I do. I was wondering if we could also have a comparison instead of comparing it to a um, hypothetical plan that didn't happen for a for a um, a permit that was not issued by us. It was issued by PNZ. I would like to see it can return more to a pre-developed pre-pre-developed. The questions at this point are only that if you have a misunderstanding of anything that was presented. We're, okay. Okay. But I just want him to know I'm going to let ask for more information on that. So this gives him some more time to prepare that. Okay. Thank you. Ross, is that, that it? Ross, anything? No, I understood it all. I was just going to ask about some other things. That's all. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Commissioner Hall, EJ? I'm good with everything. Okay, let's go down the line that I have. Uh, Commissioner Stewart? Uh, yeah, my only question would be, do you have a drawing showing those uh, watershed lines pre and, and post development? We do. Those, um, we do have those. Those figures were included in the engineering report, and they're also included in this presentation in a couple of slides. Okay, thank you. And then last, uh, I think, Clark. All set. Thanks. Okay. Great. Uh, presenters, you can continue presenting. Thank you, Chairman, and, and, and thank you, Bill, for, for that summary. Um, so, so 
so so Bill and, and, and we've been studying this site exhaustively and what we've come up with and what we propose is what we feel is the best way to address the the existing conditions the activity that's been that took place on the property by a previous owner and the current owner is who is proposing this application to provide all of this activity to restore this area so i'm going to go through in, in in detail with what we're proposing um and then we'll we'll uh we'll be able to answer any more questions so our our uh Application materials were comprehensive and, and substantial. I believe our site plan application set was 42 sheets, um, 24 by 36. Our engineering report was nearly 600 pages. We had additional information. We have submitted to planning and zoning as well for the same application. And there were some questions regarding the best, the best method in which to um, pursue the approvals for this restoration. The while well, the wetlands commission, as you're aware, there is a, uh, a wetland uh, restoration application, mitigation application. There's also the normal full um, regulated activity application. This application has been submitted as a regulated activity because the nature of the um, restoration work would also require a planning and zoning approval. So we felt that this means and methods of pursuing this restoration work was, was most appropriate to go with a full regulated activity um, application and um, a site plan application to planning and zoning to capture all of the various complexities of the project. Um, so our proposal includes um, the construction of a, uh, the majority of the site activity is related to operations. However, we are proposing the construction of a 2,360 square foot office at the very entrance to the facility. Um, it includes 10 parking spaces with, um, you know, uh, uh, grading and restoration around this area. The majority of this access drive was actually approved as part of the re-subdivision of section four of the Pepper Street Business Park. We've basically um, built onto that with this building and um, what, this, what this allows us is to actually perfect and complete the rest of the utility installation coming through the newly um, defined cul-de-sac at, uh, at Cambridge Drive, approved as part of that Section 4 resubdivision, and then expand upon it. And, and the, so the only um, uh, site activities that isn't, that isn't simply grading and seating and restoration is limited to this small office building in the very front and the construction of stormwater, um, stormwater basins to accommodate the stormwater runoff from the property, and not only now, but also in the future condition as well. Um, so the balance of the site activity is really just the import of, 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 of materials, the placement of that materials to allow for the site to be developed in the future for um, further commercial or industrial uses. Um, you know, we, we could have come in with an application that shows fictitious buildings that we would like to pursue, um, but we didn't want to propose something that was um, uh, not based in reality. The reality is this site is, is large, it's substantial, but in its current condition, it is not in a mode that's easily marketed to potential end users. So um, we need to prepare the site in order to um, entice some of those other larger commercial or industrial users to, to put this site and to be a much more productive and active property for the town of Monroe um, in the commercial tax base. Um, so, um, when we looked at when we did our analysis and we evaluated the watersheds and things like that we that's what really drove our proposed grading activities and um per commissioner stewart he had mentioned um a question about the watershed so we went and we looked at the historic topo that existed on the property prior to any activities in 2006 we determined the um the, so the site was was a mountain it had some ridge lines through here there were approximately 9.7 acres, which contributed to the eastern wetland system here, and about 31.7 acres, which contributed to the uh, westerly wetlands and the westerly wetland system here. We then looked at the existing conditions, which are out there today, and the watershed for that easterly wetland system was has been reduced by the previous owner down to about 2.17 acres. So, so the so. Previously, this wet wetland system was fed hydraulically by nearly 10 acres worth of watershed. And today that's been reduced um, nearly fivefold. So 
that is really what, what, what Bill determined and observed in terms of how these systems are, are functioning and operating. And that's something we really wanted to look at. Um, and, and, and now there's a large portion of the site which really doesn't contribute to anything from a watershed standpoint because it drains into itself and, and, and stays inside the site, which is, a, which is dewatered as, um, as needed from a site management standpoint. We then looked at what was, what was previously approved in 2006. And um, Commissioner Spence, we, we, we heard your comment and we um, appreciate it. Um, but from, a, from an analysis standpoint, we had to look to see kind of what was approved. Not that we wanted to use this as a benchmark, but we wanted to just have the information as an understanding standpoint. This actually reduced that watershed down to five acres, a little over five acres. So if, if this plan had been constructed as approved, um, that watershed to these wetland systems would have been reduced to about about five acres, half of what it was fed before. Um, so, and and frankly, with the cuts that were proposed as part of this development, there'd be no way to increase that contributing watershed at all in the future because of the deep cuts proposed. And essentially, this wetland system, which is, which is up on up on you know in between some bedrock ridges, you know it would have this five acres of contributing watershed, but then there'd be a steep, sharp, um, rapid descent and grade through a, through a retaining wall or a rock face. So that there'd be no way to really add any additional watershed to this wetland system. So that's what drove the majority of our design. And, and our proposal proposes to, to bring in a considerable amount of fill towards the rear of the property. And what we're doing is restoring about eight acres of watershed, which would then rehydrate and refeed this easterly wetland system to restore the vibrancy and the, the functions and the values that it provided before. Um, I will, I, I do want to make sure, and, and I'm sure Bill will, will offer some, Bill Kenny will offer some additional clarification on this. It's my understanding that, that vernal pools, um, vernal pools only need to have demonstrate evidence of vernal pool obligate species once every seven years for them to be considered a vernal pool. So the fact that today, due to recent activity, he did not observe any vernal pool obligate species in this in vernal pool one or this eastern this uh, eastern what easternmost wetland system. Um, with the restoration of this watershed, it is very likely that this system will be returned to its previous condition, and the vernal pool obligate species will be able to return and to continue to flourish through here. Now, um, some of the other decisions that we made in our grading had to do with a couple different aspects of the vernal pool itself. There's the vernal pool, um, the limits of the vernal pool, which is where that, that vernal pool is delineate, delineated. There's a vernal pool envelope, which is essentially a 100 foot buffer from the limits of that vernal pool. And then there's obviously a terrestrial habitat. What we did from a grading standpoint is we wanted to, to restore to the best of our abilities that vernal pool um, envelope so that our grading through this area as proposed along the eastern edge of this site essentially maintains and matches some of the uh, previous um, and former grading that existed so that we're basically trying to propose to maintain a three to one or four to one slope up from the edge of the existing disturbance up through the vernal pool envelope which will allow us to create essentially a peak and a plateau that extends to that edge and um, establishes something that will create some additional um, habitat for any of those vernal pool obligate species. It can be finished with some plantings and some uh, horse woody debris and things like that. And that'll really add, actually provide additional protection. Um, we did receive some comments from both um, Denise, and, uh, the, the wetlands agent, and um, the town engineer, Scott Schatzline. We received them earlier this week. Um, we will be preparing a full comprehensive set of responses to those and we'll be meeting with with both of them to review our responses to make sure we're trying to be responsive to their concerns and their comments um, I'm gonna I am gonna be touching on some of those because there were some comments about why we came up with the elevation that we came up with why did we propose a plateau of 282 here when you know surrounding properties were at lower elevations we did that because we wanted to restore that watershed so essentially what our proposal does is it, is it creates a, um, a flatter level ground when you first enter the property, which would be consistent with the current grade through this area. And then it essentially raises the grade further north on four independence drive 
to create a little bit of a plateau that'll help restore that watershed. And what this also does is because we're, we're raising it to a grade, we're, we're maintaining that three to one slope through that vernal pool envelope and creating a level area, we're preparing this site for future development. So when this site is further developed, We'll also have the opportunity to collect stormwater and then direct it over to this to this to these wetland systems to almost to exactly match the same watershed that was contributing to it before. So even though we've only made an eight acre watershed contributing to it as part of this design, it enables us to pursue future site development at four independence and get a full ten acres, if not more, contributing to rehydrating that that wetland system. So it was something that we we did put a lot of thought into. Um, in, in developing our proposed grades and, and trying to be responsive and, and respectful of some of those resources and how those resources have been neglected over the past several years by a prior owner. Um, and included in our application is um, exhaustive uh, sections in accordance with um, the art, Article 6 of the Planning and Zoning Regulations. Um, there are um, excavation and fill permit requirements which apply to all, um, uh, a lot of those conditions apply to all site plan applications. We wanted to, because this was such a considerable earthwork exercise, we also provided sections in accordance with, um, site sections in accordance with that requirement. So this is a section which shows, um, this is somewhere probably up in this area here. So somewhere along that northern, um, that northern section of the site, which we're proposing to fill uh, closer to Independence Drive, so what it shows is it shows the, the, the existing grade dashed here. It shows the limit of the wetlands, the limit of the on-site vernal pool, and it shows our proposed grading. You can see what we did is we tried to maintain that three to one to four to one slope um, from that existing edge of disturbance up to that plateau to essentially create a, a, a potential level pad that can be utilized in the future for, for commercial or industrial activity but it also creates a better hard stop so that this area here can be established, planted as part of this application, um, and really delineate the edges that we need to make sure are protected in the future for this property to, to come back to be a, um, a, a more productive property for, for the town. So this is just one glimpse of one of the sections that we provided, but I wanted to kind of go through that with the commission so they could understand um, some of our, our desired intents and, and things that we incorporate into our into our design methodologies. Um, with our proposed grading activity, there's obviously a lot of earthwork and import of material that will be needed to satisfy um, these proposed grades. Um, this application does propose a net import of approximately 1.3 million cubic yards of material. Our application has been um, ha has requested that the Wetlands Commission, in accordance with your regulations, grant us an approval for 10 years, which will allow us to orderly import and manage this extensive earthwork operation to satisfy the goals set out as part of this application. Um, there are a lot of concerns, and I think um, maybe leading to some of that potential misinformation that's out there about the how are you going to control the quality of material that comes into this site and to protect um, protect the property, protect the surrounding resources from a um, uh, potential contaminant or environmental impact. I think the recent activities that took place at the uh, Fairfield DPW um, facility have raised a lot of concerns. And this is something that we've taken very seriously and the property owner takes very seriously. And um, included in our application material was a, 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 an in, a, a material intake protocol procedure, which has been implemented, and the applicant is working with the DEP Division of Solid Waste um, to, uh, as part of that, part of the preparation of that of that protocol. What it does, it requires manifests for all material that comes to the property make sure that there's a certification that that material meets the definition of certified clean fill in accordance with DEEP's requirements. And as part of our um, engineering report, we included that, that intake protocol. We also included some information regarding what DEP considers clean fill. Um, so it includes it includes the verification and a certification that the material meets that definition. It also includes 
um, QA, QC, and randomized testing of material as it comes in to ensure that the material that would come in would be would meet those requirements, those stringent requirements, because it is not in anyone's interest for any material that doesn't meet those strict requirements to come onto this property and to be placed, because if it does, it becomes a problem for everyone. It becomes a problem for the owner. And and Mr. Carp is not in the business of of dealing with environmental calamities. We we this is this project and this process has been has been thought out with a number of very very talented professionals, and we're, we're putting all protective measures in place to ensure that that the that that potential isn't isn't there to the best of our abilities. So um, that is something that we put a lot of thought into, and we are actively working with DEP um, about that, and, and we've included that in our submission materials. Um, in addition to our to our grading and drainage plan, it was also prepared in accordance with the 2004 um, stormwater quality manual, and our 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 systems have been designed uh, Kevin, with. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Kevin, can we just uh, before you go on to another topic, just make sure we don't have any questions, clarifications, requests from the commissioners on the previous part. Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Does any of the commissioners have any questions about what was the next uh, piece of information that's been presented to us? I'm going to, I'm going to go down the line. Uh, Lois, do you have any questions? None. Ross? I was wondering if you could just quickly show with the red marker what direction the sun takes over the picture that's showing on my computer right now. It, I'm just, it I'm, rises in the east and sets in the west. So this is this, the area. Bottom to top. So that area probably being blazing full sun in the afternoon. Okay, that's, Ross, I don't want to cut you off, but that's not really a clarification. That's something we could probably talk about later on. Okay. But thank you. Yep. Yeah, well, I was just talking about the wetlands, you know. The, um, the uh, pools, I'm sorry. Richard Hall. I'm good. Good. Okay. Um, we're going down the line here. Commissioner Stewart? I'm good. Good. Commissioner Gingras? I'm good. Okay. Kevin, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman uh, Romano. Um, just so with this grading, as we come up through here, we continue that grading all the way around to here to make sure that even this also continues to drain down. So with our planting plan, we'd be providing, a, you know, much more robust shade than what's currently provided under existing conditions caused by the, the, the prior owner. Um, so our, our stormwater plan has been designed with a series of stormwater basins throughout the property, two along the, the entrance to the uh, east and west of the proposed building, one in the southeast corner, and then the drainage other than the area that's contributing to the easterly wetland system. There's also a municipal stormwater basin located in the northwest corner of the site, which um, accommodate stormwater from Independence Drive through the municipal system. Um, from a utility standpoint, we did we do have um, a utility plan included with our application, which essentially just extends utilities that were approved as part of the Section 4. Um, it provides underground utilities for the small office building and a septic system um, along the uh, to the north of the system through here. We did provide we did do testing with the town sanitarian and included that as part of our, our application. Um, we have a, an extensive landscape plan included as part of our application materials, and it was broken out into a number of sections. We are proposing to um, uh, seed and stabilize the entire site until a future application would potentially propose development in either of these two areas. But we are proposing extensive um, vegetation and buffer plantings along the wetland edge, which would be put in as part of this application to provide those protection measures um, and established edges for any kind of for any future um, consideration on the property. So we've we've provided extensive extensive landscaping around the proposed office. We have um, buffer plantings, which were approved as part of the Section 4 plan. You can actually see those through here and these plantings as well. We're also supplementing that with additional information or with additional planting materials. Um, additionally, in the along this easterly wetland edge, we have proposed um, a substantial um, 
uh, landscape plan with when, through working in concert with Bill Kenny's office to ensure that we create an, an, an uh, established edge. And you can see here this darker dashed line, if you follow my red cursor, shows the limit of that 100 foot vernal pool envelope. So we wanted to make sure that that area was protected, established. Um, and we've also proposed on our site plan and um, other plans we've shown um, wetland markers along these areas as well to ensure that these will be put in as part of this application to establish that edge so that any teacher um, activity on the property knows that those areas are to be protected um, and not um, uh, and, and not entered at, at all. Um, additionally, as part of our application, part of our review, there were, and Bill Kenny did allude to this, that as part of a, another application for another property on 36 Timothy Hill Road, there was activity done and there were two wetland crossings, one of which is located on this property. And that was like a, a corduroy road or, or a timber bridge road, which were essentially put across the wetland areas. As part of our delineation that we did observe and Mr. Kenny did identify that that area was impacted as part of that. And part of this application includes um, the, the removal of those, uh, of those, of that timber um, and then the replanting and essentially mitigating about 675 square feet of, of wetlands that were impacted by, um, by, by someone else as part of another application. So that is included in our application. I know that was a question that I think came in in, in Denise's comments, and, and that is something that we are, that was identified in our plan set. We know our plan set had a lot of information on it, so, um, but I wanted to make sure that was very clear that was included as part of our, as part of our work. Right. Um, Kevin, maybe it's a good time for you to wrap up the evening um, and then we'll get some last, uh, any last clarification comments afterwards? Sure, I, I can do that. I, I, I'll just touch, if, if I could actually have maybe 10 more minutes, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was our application, we had a, we had a phase. Well, then let's do this, Kevin. Excuse, Kevin, let's just, let's just break it down and make sure there's no any clarifications for any commissioners? Sure. Um, uh, Lois, have you are you good with everything so far? Basically, but I wanted to know more about the phasing process. That's okay. That we can catch you later. But you understand everything you've been presented mm -hmm. the past few minutes. Ross, you're good. Uh, just some questions at some point when the when we're gonna have a play of time as we present session to this but now we just want to make sure you're not you're you're just good with everything so far you understand it not that um, you accept it that you understand it. okay yes i understand that's all I'm just checking with everybody because okay. uh dj understood is presented okay um Mr. Stewart? yeah i'm good clark yeah i understand everything thank you all right great kevin you can go ahead and wrap uh give me 10 more minutes great so um so one of the things that was included in our application was a very comprehensive and complex soil erosion sediment control plan. And we put a lot of thought into the phasing of this. As, as we indicated, we're requesting the commission to grant us an approval to do this work and to perform these improvements over a 10 year period. And generally what this commission receives is usually a simple SEC plan that shows some silt fence and some um, you know uh, hay bales and things like that which really wasn't appropriate for this level of a project. And because um, the amount of activity that's gonna happen during this phase construction, phase implementation of these improvements, we, we, we provided phase, three different distinct phases so that we could demonstrate exactly how the site needs to be managed during those phases and to provide clarity from, the, from a commission standpoint on what the site's gonna look like during those during those phases and included in our engineer report is a narrative of how long those phases are anticipated to take to to, to last and and what our approach is so from a from so this this plan on the on the screen is, is phase one of our sec plan the first phase would be focused on um cleaning up the front portion of the property installing um the uh stormwater basins which will serve as sediment basins and sediment traps during this first phase of construction establishing those in their permanent condition cleaning up this front portion of the property removing all of the stockpiles um, that have been placed there by the prior owner and then starting to fill the rear portion of the property 
this would be about 210,000 cubic yards of fill. Um, and we would expect this phase to last one to two years. Um, as part of this and as part of our, as part of the first phase and our entire duration is we want to actually dewater the, uh, the stormwater that collects towards the northern edge of the site. We want to dewater that and, and discharge that water and pump it up so that it's going to start to restore some of that hydrology that feeds these easterly wetland systems. So as part of phase one, we have a basin in the northeast corner, which is considerably lower than the existing grade of these wetlands, but we're proposing to pump that water up and provide that through, um, through, through a series of pipes and hoses to actually rehydrate some of this wetland. Um, the, uh, this plant, all of these plans, again, the site is currently covered under two general permits with DEP. We have reporting that we are doing in accordance with those, with those permits. Um, we're actively out there doing SEC inspections and those would obviously maintain. And this is a detailed plan of how that first phase would be implemented. Um, as part of phase two, which would be as part of phase two. So the front portion would be essentially graded and seeded. And we'd also construct the proposed office building, drive aisle, parking, things like that, to establish essentially a front of house where this property could be, could be um, the, the work could be completed and it can be in a position where it can be actively marketed towards potential users. Um, so this is a very large area of industrial land which should be utilized for, for something more than what it has been over the years. Um, Phase two would be approximately 550,000 cubic yards of fill, um, which would primarily be focused on that, again, that northern edge of the property. Um, as part of phase one, and one of the things that we're requesting as part from the Planning and Zoning Commission is to, this, this project requires the import of a considerable amount of material. That material that comes into the site will need to be prepared and processed so that it can be placed as part of this fill operation. But one of the things that we're actually detailing is how that material would come in. We've identified a series of bins, which is how that material would come in. It'd be sorted. It'd be, it'd be um, set aside to be tested and prior to being placed, um, processed and placed into the areas of the, deeper, of the deeper fills. So we are requesting that there will need to be processing of materials that come in from offsite in order to prepare them to be placed as part of the larger earthwork operations. As part of phase one that kind of stays more towards the middle of the site and then once this area is 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 finished and we move on to phase two that would move would be moved more towards the center of the site so we actually show on phase two a small access drive which would kind of come around this larger area getting towards more the center of the site and we've identified an area where import intake material would take place that material would be again stored and staged in bins to be tested and inspected prior to processing and then actually continue to place it in the the northernmost reach of the site along Independence Drive, which requires the greatest amount of fill. And again, phase two is approximately 550,000 cubic yards of, of import that would be brought in and placed on the property. And we think that would take about uh, three to four years to, to implement. Um, uh, moving on to phase three, um, phase three would essentially deem that the front portion of the site is essentially completed, it's finished, and we would actually move access from a construction standpoint from Cambridge Drive up to Independence Drive as the balance of this material is placed and filled to achieve our ultimate desired goals uh, from an elevation standpoint, the establishment of this plateau to then restore that to overall watershed in its finished condition. Um, Phase three represents approximately 590,000 cubic yards of import or placement of fill. And it, we anticipate this would take approximately three to four years. Um, and that would really just be the balance of the fill in the back until, until, we, until and when we have an area where we have that, that established larger plateau to the north. We've completed the, the plateau to the south. And then essentially at the end of phase three, we'd be, we'd be complete with all of the um, activities proposed as part of this application. Um, that was the, the, the phased SEC was the last component of our presentation. We can talk a little bit about, about our alternatives, but I know we're getting to that hour. And, and Chairman Romano, I know you want it to be done. So I'm happy to answer any clarification questions on the um, phasing of the implementation of these improvements. And then we can, uh, and then I'm happy to uh, defer to you on how you want to handle the rest of the presentation.
Okay, let me um let me go start uh, through the call again. Um, Commissioner Spence, any I clarification questions? I have one that I'm not sure you'll allow, but I'm going to ask it anyway. It'll be allowed. It'll be allowed at some point, but just now, just to make sure we understand the presentation. I just want to know if the water goes to the cleaning process as it gets rewatered out of the northern part of the site to to water the new wetlands or the old wetlands rather is it being cleaned first how how is it being so that's a methodology that's a methodology question that we can certainly ask um in the next phase okay, okay. but they'll know they'll obviously know that that's coming and that's good um special uh my Sirocco? which phase is the upper those three vernal pools up top phase is that okay that's probably so you're kevin Quickly, because it may. Yep. Sure. So, so those, so we, we'd be, we'd start the rehydration process immediately, because as part of phase one, while we're not going to be achieving those grades to get surface water to flow to those, to those wetlands, we'd be dewatering, and and pumping that water up so it re so it so it discharges and refeeds that water. So we want to start that immediately to get those to get those to get the, the hydrology restored to that. Um, we would be done with probably, um, you know, we'd, we'd be restoring the, 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 the watershed during phase, during phase two, um, but the, 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 the full completion of that from a surface flow standpoint wouldn't be completed until the end of phase three, simply because the area to the north is the deepest part of the site and requires the most amount of material. So, so we, we, we essentially wanted to do that as, as quickly as we could, but that's why we addressed the, the, the dewatering to rehydrate those areas. One other point that I wanted to make that was included in our grading and drainage plan is we are also proposing to install a, a, an impervious liner um, beneath this area of the proposed fill to ensure that there wouldn't be any instance of um, surface water falling on this area and then essentially exfiltrating down past the, the 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 vernal pools. We're going to make sure that the, as the fills place through here, um, once once the, the the earthwork operations are finished, all surficial water that falls, even if it exfiltrates for the first few feet, it'll hit that impervious liner and then it'll seep out towards those wetlands and those watersheds to get those rehydrated. Ross, did I answer your question? Um, I guess yeah. We'll have plenty of time to dig into the details. I just want to make sure that we all understood what we got tonight. Uh, Commissioner Hall? Yeah, one question. Go ahead. Uh, phase, phase two, what's the duration of phase two? Um, we would just say phase two would be three to four years in duration. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Commissioner Stewart? I still understand what they're saying. All right, excellent. And Commissioner Gingrich. I'm all set. Thanks. I'll say okay, Kevin. Uh, thank you. Mr. Now, Mr. You, Mr. Chairman, May. I'm sorry. Who's that? Uh, Joel Green on behalf of the intervener. Yes. Yeah, I have a question as to, um, in terms of the phasing, I presume that there's going to be um, some sort of evaluation of the present soils that have been imported into the site and the groundwater quality before the work begins and maybe the applicant can address that in what phase a, that will occur a, where that will occur and how that will occur attorney green that is a methodology question that we'll be handling when we know when they've finished their present their opening presentation so there has they haven't presented any of that part us out of need okay. of clarification for so when the time comes at the next hearing or the one after that then you can definitely dig into uh any any questions about that process thank you mr chairman well all right kevin um you guys are do you feel you're 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 done with your opening presentation or do you want to um, do more the only thing left on my presentation was some presentations of some alternates we, we did have, in accordance with the regulations, we did propose or we did provide two alternative plans. Um, and Bill Kenny did provide an analysis of those two alternatives. I know there were questions in Denise's comments. 
Um, we can do them tonight, but we can also do that as part no, of the. We're not going to do them the, tonight, but I'm just asking for the next meeting. Are we going to continue? Are you going to continue to present to us before we have these comments? I, I think we're. I think we're ready to. I think we're ready to. to you present the alternative. That would be the last thing to present, and I can do that in five minutes. Um, but I think we're ready to, to proceed with commission comments and, and, and public comments. Uh, before Keith, uh, it's Arnold Carp. I, I lost you on my computer, and uh, I have you by voice only. Um, Attorney Finn, uh, who's also on this, uh, did inform me that I, I misspoke earlier when uh, I didn't note that I had formed two separate LLCs that actually own the property, not me or my family personally. They are in two LLCs. So I just wanted to correct that for the record. All right, thank you for cor correcting the record. So what we'll do is at the next uh, meeting, we'll probably run it, do it a similar way. If we're online, um, my hope is that we're in chambers. Um, that would be great. We have about a month before the next meeting. Um, if not, if we're in the same format, we're gonna try to, uh, if we're still doing it online like this, I think what we'll do is we're gonna let you present your two alternatives, and then we'll do the commissioner comments, and we'll give you probably a similar time frame. We'll do the same way. We'll take care of all the other business first, and give you guys uh, the remainder of the meeting. Um, I mean, we're gonna see how it goes, but I would, I would imagine that it's gonna be a little difficult to do the public comments. So hopefully we could we could, we could spend it. If we're gonna be in this format again, we'll deal with all the commissioner stuff first. Then obviously public comes after that anyways. Um, right? So we'll take the next meeting to, to, to deal with all the questions and concerns from the commission. And also, as we said earlier, our independent review or third party review um we don't know when that's coming um do we have any idea when that's coming Anna? I, requested it the, I requested it for the next meeting okay but i don't i haven't received confirmation then that when we'll get it they just received the package uh today okay so i think maybe um you know, this is the question I, I never thought of just now. Do we, when they finish their review, do they come and, and and express their findings to us in the meeting, or do we just get them and read them ourselves? I believe they just require a report. They give us a, just a report? Yes. Okay, so we're going to need, probably going to want to, I think, have an opportunity to read the report. So um now we can certainly uh start our concerns that we have right now from the presentation but we're going to certainly need some time to digest the report and then ask further questions from there so my feeling and anybody can correct me if i'm wrong we should still have uh now i know we have an intervener so that person can also be um you know given this opportunity or, and before we have the opportunity to digest the report from the third party and, and discuss that. So uh, I keep hold on. No? I can't yeah. hear Keith at all. Donna. Okay, Donna. go ahead now. I'm sorry. So. So I'm just trying to think ahead as much as possible. We're going to have um, our comments. We have the intervener. And then we have our third party report. And I think that we should get through all that stuff before we open up the public, right? Public input? Yeah. Like, let's say we get through, let's say the next meeting, we get through all our comments, but we're still waiting on the report. I guess I think we still wait for the public until we get to that point as a community of, of having questioned or 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 you know digested 
fully the the third the third party information. Um, uh, yes, I believe that's correct. I missed half of that because it keeps cutting out. And I'm not sure why. <laughs> we're we're quite a bit past our uh, what I wanted when I wanted to cut this off. But uh, Kevin, have you have you understand where I'm coming from here? I, I do. I I think that that uh, your proposal is, is excellent. Um, I, I I'd hate to. I can do the the alternatives in like three minutes. So I'd hate to open no. up next month's meeting next month's meeting and go through something that really isn't germane to the overall substance of our application um but you're but also I'm happy get, to do you're also going to get we're going to dig into the, you know some of these deeper questions we'll have time we're not just going to you know we, we're going to give you that the second half of the meeting again basically great so okay great yeah um what i'm saying is that we might hit a little bit of a pause depending on when our third party review comes in understood okay and, and uh, you know, I, I'd like to offer if if it's something that they may would be, if they'd be interested in, if they could help facilitate their review, we'd be happy to meet with them and review our you know review the materials with them and answer any questions that they may have. Well, again, my hope is that we're back in chambers by the next meeting. That make that maybe go a little bit smoother. Um, I'm not even sure what to expect from this uh, third party review, so we'll see what happens when we get it. Great. All right, um, so it is, I'm gonna call, uh, make a motion to close the meeting at seven uh, 9, 17 p.m. Uh, Mr. All Chairman, in favor? If I, may. if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, who, are, who are we speaking, who's speaking? Stay the, your name. The intervener, the intervener is speaking, Joel Green. Yes. Um, just briefly, um, the applicant has apparently been submitting documents to uh, the commission. We filed our intervention on May 27th. Uh, Ms. Szynski has done an excellent job, and I thank her for keeping me informed of all filings. Um, but really, the applicant and its consultants should be providing the same copies and the same documents, and the intervener should be copied on everything, and copies should be made available to the intervener by the applicant. And uh, if you could just note that for the record, I'd appreciate it. That for record, I'm sure the office staff can bring you to get everything back up to speed. All right, so yep. thank you, uh, Attorney Green. We are going to close the meeting at 9, uh, 18 p.m. Do we have a motion? Close the meeting. I make a motion to close the meeting. That was Commissioner uh, Gingras? Yes. Uh, we have a second. Second. Second from Commissioner Hall. Hall. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Any abstention? All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for everybody's uh, input and working with uh, a little bit of new dynamics here with the meeting. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.